set against the horrors of Ukraine, an English football club inconvenienced, is something of a sideshow. For those fans who are intending to buy tickets on a match basis, uh, that will not be possible. For uh, away fans who are playing Chelsea uh, in, in the next couple of months, they won't be able to attend those matches either. Um, and uh, for those people intending to buy merchandise, uh, that won't be possible. It looks as if the, the club shop will be closed. As you rightly said, this is, uh, this is completely insignificant in, in, in the wider context of what's happening in Ukraine. Chelsea fans, some of who chanted in support of Abramovich last week, have a club which can't be sold, buy or sell players, but a government working with the Premier League to minimise the impact on the club, as opposed to Abramovich himself. I think when you look at what is happening in Ukraine and you, you look at the, uh, the casual rejection of every norm of civilised behaviour in, in bombing a, a maternity hospital, I think people in this country uh, can see that people connected uh, to the Putin regime uh, need to be sanctioned and that's what we're doing. Today, Solaris, one of Abramovich's yachts, was tracked steaming west in the Mediterranean off Sicily. Chelsea, of course, a small plaything in Abramovich's trophy cabinet of industrial holdings. So the yachts, the houses, the football club all come from massive wealth gained through oil, steel, nickel and semiconductor interests, both civilian and military in Russia, creating part of his 9.4 billion net worth. The government says he is, quote, one of the few oligarchs from the 1990s to maintain prominence under Putin. He's sanctioned today for contracts received for the Russian World Cup in 2018, plus potentially supplying steel for tanks used in the invasion of Ukraine. Amongst the other six, Oleg Deripaska, the so-called aluminium king and one-time Abramovich business partner. Notoriously, it was George Osborne and Peter Mandelson who enjoyed life aboard Deripaska's luxury yacht in times past. Also sanctioned, Igor Sechin, chief executive of Russia's state oil company Rosneft. People like Igor Sechin at Rosneft, these are the barons of the Russian state-controlled energy industry created by Putin. In many cases, they go way back with him, sometimes all the way back to the KGB. So if our game is to try to use pressure to force a change of leadership in Russia, it's hard to see how that works, because these guys must surely know that if they, if they help to take Putin down, they're, they're likely to go down with him. None can travel here, no UK citizen or company can do business with them. But putting them into the economic deep freeze has taken a long time for the UK government. It's been so obvious for so long that sanctions are coming that, um, you know, what sanctions lawyers tell me is that obviously a lot of money that was here in secret will have been, will have been shuffled away like a, like a yacht steaming towards the high seas. Now sanctions are always a land of unforeseen consequences and today's move focuses the spotlight again on how the English Premier League operates. More widely, these sanctions will now reinvigorate the debate going on in and around football that the Premier League's notion of who or what is a fit and proper entity to own a major football club is more than due for overhaul. Chelsea are not the only case in point. Newcastle United, controversially sold to the Saudis, believed to have murdered a prominent journalist and repressing human rights at home on an industrial scale. Just one example. The Premier League uh, head, uh, Richard Masters, he, he did say recently that the, the present owners and directors test, which uh, does, does monitor behaviour of owners uh, when, when they're acquiring a club, that could be extended to look at things from a, from a human rights angle um, and therefore that could be used to prevent some owners potentially coming into the game. The power of sports washing, the politics of brutality, not lost, of course, on one Vladimir Putin. Keen to see and be seen at everything, from the Olympics to the Russian World Cup, in what now looks like a very different world. Well, Chelsea's Premier League match at Norwich this evening is going ahead, despite the sanctions against Roman Abramovich. Our sports reporter, Jordan Jarrett Bryan, joins us now from Carrow Road. Jordan. Yes, Christian, as you mentioned there, Chelsea's short-term issues are trying to gather three points in the Premier League here against Norwich, but their middle to long-term issues are trying to salvage the future of their football club. As you saw there in Alex Thompson's piece, this morning's announcement of the sanctions on their Russian billionaire owner having huge repercussions for the football club. But what does that mean for the Chelsea supporters? Well, I spoke to some of the fans just before kick-off here earlier on, and here's what they had to say. 
fair play, it is what needs to be done. Everyone's just going to have to see how we get on. I think the overwhelming majority of Chelsea supporters think that Mr. Abramovich has been stitched up. We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. I've got a, I've got a ticket next week for Lille, and I am a season ticket holder. But after that, who knows? We tried to get Middlesbrough tickets away in the cup today, and we couldn't get none now. They're not selling tickets. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to sell four, tickets. Over 40 years, for 50 odd years, mm -hmm. they can't get a ticket now. Games. So you can see there the Chelsea supporters, they're not happy at all. They feel their owner has been singled out and in turn their club has been picked on as well. Uh, the, the repercussions do feel down to the supporters as well because the club's shop can't sell merchandise. Tickets can't be sold as well. More bad news for Chelsea as well. As earlier on, it was announced that their chief uh, kit sponsor, the mobile phone network 3, issued a statement saying, in light of the government recently announcing some sanctions, we have requested Chelsea Football Club temporarily suspend our sponsorship of the club. Another kit sponsor as well, the car manufacturer Hyundai, also said they will be assessing their relationship with the club as well. So massive repercussions for the football club from the top where the owner sits down to where the supporters are as well. Thanks, Jordan.